They're gonna be over here, y'all. They're gonna they're, they're gonna be over here, y'all. Good. <laughs> Robert, I'm going to mute you. That's fine. Okay, Michelle, I'm going to go ahead and get started then. Sounds good. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Julia Duhar. I'm a project manager with Prime AE Group. And welcome to your community engagement meeting to discuss the Ed Davis Community Center facility. The city of Akron and the Akron Recreation Bureau reached out to the architectural community uh, back in August of last year to perform facility condition audits of three community centers. This audit provides an evaluation of existing components within the buildings, possible renovation options, and costs to bring the existing facilities up to today's needs. The goal of today's meeting is to gather ideas from the Ed Davis community. These ideas will help inspire how the building is best programmed and renovated to meet the needs of the community. All right. Joining us today are Deputy Mayor of Integrated Development, James Hardy, Development Engineering Manager, Michelle D. Fior, Recreation and Parks Manager, Brittany Schmeckel, and Ed Davis Supervisor Robert Dowdle. Also joining us today from Prime AE is Dana Mitchell, Senior Vice President of Architecture and Engineering, Robert Habel, Principal in Charge, myself, Julia Duhart, Project Manager, Zach Forney, who is our Designer and Community Engagement Liaison, and Marie Dowling, who is a Principal at Banky Landscape Architecture. We would like to start today's meeting agenda with a project overview from James Hardy, explaining the city's vision for the community centers. James. Thanks, Julia. Hope everybody can hear me uh, and see me okay. Uh, it's a real privilege to be with you tonight to kick off this process. Uh, it's the first of many outreach efforts that this team that you see on this slide is going to uh, endeavor to complete to make this project successful. This is really an exciting time uh, for those of us that love recreation and believe so strongly in it uh, as, a, as a catalyst for positive things in our city. Uh, Ed Davis is first up in a brand new community center reinvestment program that we have launched with this uh, 2021 capital budget at the city. As, as many of you know, and I, I don't need to, to say much more, I know I'm preaching to the choir, we haven't taken very good care. Uh, of these uh, facilities over the course of the last 20, 30 years. And, um, and that's not okay. And we're, we're trying to fix that. We're trying to, to change that trajectory. And we, we want your input and help. Uh, these are really community assets. Our job is to build what the community feels is most relevant to meet their needs. And I could not be prouder of this team and, and to kick this, uh, this process off with you tonight. So I cannot wait. Uh, as I'm sure all the team to see all the feedback and the, and the engagement that we get. We have an incredible community center supervisor uh, in Robert that's going to help us all, all along the way. But um, again, just so excited that this process is finally kicking off. And, and you know that we have uh, a firm commitment from City Hall to see to it that uh, at least $2 million of investment, that's our, that's our target for each of these centers. Uh, $2 million to improve Ed Davis and make it uh, better, uh, stronger, and more uh, relevant to the needs you have in the community. So looking forward to tonight. All right. Thank you, James. This evening, we are going to provide a brief overview of how we approach building audits and what we have observed at Ed Davis to date. Then we want to spend the majority of the time openly discussing your ideas for Ed Davis by asking you two questions. What do you want to see in a community center and what is missing from Ed Davis Community Center? We're gonna come back to this slide later in the meeting, but we're also, we're also going to follow up with, uh, with your ideas and start to create and highlight opportunities for program growth within Ed Davis. 
Uh, first, we're gonna do a little bit of homework here. <laughs> Uh, wanted to let everybody know that we are, have muted everyone because we are recording this meeting today. Uh, we also want to share with you some of the tools with a Zoom meeting. Uh, there is, the chat box will be open the entire time. You may have already seen that I uh, put in a greeting, uh, but if you don't know where your chat box is, look at the bottom of your phone or computer and look for the chat icon and it should pop up this chat box. If it is not there, uh, there's also a three dot more button and, and sometimes it's located there. Everybody's version sometimes differs. What we want you to do during today's meeting is use the chat box and share with us your ideas as we go through this presentation. And if you have any questions, please also share your questions. Uh, we it just encourage your, uh, you to participate throughout the whole meeting. And if we don't get to you today, we will follow up with your uh, questions or comments or ideas um, in the after the meeting in the coming weeks. We also are going to be asking some polling questions throughout this presentation. And you will see those pop up and we'll also prompt you. We will give you a minute or two to respond to those polling questions. And then, when we get to the open forum, there is an opportunity if you don't want to type in the chat box to uh, raise your hand. Sometimes the hand uh, icon is on your image, or you may also need to go to the more button and click raise hand, and we will get to you as soon as possible. All right, when well, we're going to start with polling question number one. Are you familiar with using Zoom? And she's gonna pop that up and please uh, respond. Okay, hey, Michelle, if you've received, okay, there we go. Everybody, yay. <laughs> uh, but if, uh, if you did not answer the question and you, and you have some issues with Zoom, please feel free um, to you know, try, see if you can try to get to the chat box. If you can't, uh, email, you can always email Robert Dowdle and submit your questions that way. All right, and with that, I would like to introduce Robert Hable with Prime AE to uh, provide an overview, overview of our process. Rob? Rob, you're, you may be muted. My technology is uh, lacking. Uh, <laughs> uh, again, thanks uh, for all of you who are here. It's a, it's a very important time uh, when we want to uh, engage you in order to uh, find out some of the things that, that you desire with your community center, certainly the idea is to make it unique. Uh, but just very quickly, just to give you an idea of what our tasks have been through the course, uh, starting uh, prior to the uh, holiday, prior to the Thanksgiving holiday, uh, we were doing basically step one of the process of a three-step process. And as Mr. Hardy mentioned, the buildings, uh, your building at Davis uh, has some needs as, as a physical structure and that they've been overlooked for a while. Uh, and so part of what we're doing is what we have done is we've done a building assessment and we've looked at the physical condition of the building. We've looked at ADA, disability issues, accessibility. Uh, we've looked at things that might be past their uh, life in terms of uh, life expectancy of materials or systems for modernization. We looked at the site, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, so basically we've looked at all of the things that you have as this asset, uh, which is Ed Davis Community Center, and it's a great asset. And to bring it up to code, to bring it up to speed, will take some 
uh, we'll take some of the budget. And so we wanna make sure that we have that uh, available, if you will, or in our, uh, in our knowledge base so that when we start to make prioritized decisions to give you the best programming, we can also address some of those uh, physical needs. Uh, we've also been looking at your program. Uh, we've been looking at the programs as they exist. We've been talking to Robert, uh, who has been very uh, 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 accommodating in talking about the, uh, the programs that go on, uh, uh, the amount of activity that goes on, certainly during this pandemic. Uh, uh, we have uh, not really seen it at full capacity, although recently uh, it's really been stepping up and we know that a lot of a lot more things have been happening at your center. And so we've gotten a good idea of what those basic programs are. And so between the two of those, you know, the what you have and what you desire, if you will, uh, is your program. But now what we want to add is your input, because really, ultimately, uh, to make Ed Davis unique, it's your vision. Uh, and what's it, it's a great opportunity, it's a very important opportunity to you for you to uh, to speak up, whether as uh, uh, Julia mentioned through the chat or through the forum, and to really talk about those things that are important to you that you might want to see in this community center. And then from there, that's when we start doing design. It would, would not be fair to show you designs of what we think you need. When we start showing you designs, we want to make sure that they're wrapped up in the things that you desire to set your vision. So that's our process. I, we just wanted to let you know that uh, uh, this is a process over time and that the response with the design will then uh, lead into uh, solid budgeting and then move on into uh, prioritizations of what is best suited for the improvements in that $2 million that uh, are earmarked for expenditures. So thank you, Julia. Thanks, Rob. So we've got a few more questions to ask you. We wanted to gauge the audience and who we're speaking with tonight. So we are going to ask, polling questions two, three, and four. Uh, how often do you visit Ed Davis Community Center? What age range best applies to you? And what are the types of programs you are interested in? And we will give you a couple of minutes. Okay, great. Here are the poll results. Looks like we've got one to three times per week. That's wonderful. All right, we got everybody's almost in my age group, 30 to 49. <laughs> and then let's see, what was the last one? And everybody's interested in all three categories of programs. Wonderful. Okay, well, we're going to start about talking about your building. We want to emphasize that there will be a time to address the fiscal conditions and the budget impacts that Rob was speaking of. But for this meeting, we really want to focus on function and give an overview of how we understood the site during our observations. And as you see on your screens, this is an aerial view of your site. And I'm going to hand it over to Marie to uh, summarize our understanding. Marie. Thanks, Julia. Good, good, good evening. Um, glad, glad, glad to be here speaking with all of you. Uh, let's talk about the exterior of, of Ed Davis and some of what the design team observed, but mostly we'd, we'd like the, the, the input from all of you. 
So how can we make the site feel safe? This doesn't necessarily mean adding lots of cameras or guards. Uh, often safety is tied to improved views into and away from the site. Also, how do we better engage more people to use, use this site? Typically, the more active a site is, the, the, more, the more people will, will feel safe. Currently, the front entrance is sunken and hidden at, at Ed Davis for much of the parking lot. One of our questions to all of you is, should, is should, is should we, we, we address this? Should, should we reduce this visual break from the parking lot to the front door? Let us know any other safety concerns you might have at, at Ed Davis. Also, should, should we look at better pedestrian and bike connections to Perkins Park? Is, is that a, a desired link? A steep narrow path currently exists at the rear side of Ed Davis to Perkins Park. One of our questions again is, should, should, should we, we, we improve that connection to increase the use of the center? Also, we'd like your thoughts on the existing play, play, playground to the southeast of the community center. It seems a, a bit hidden. Would, would that play set be better utilized elsewhere on site? And finally, what activities would you like to see outside of Ed, Ed Davis, either in the front or the back or the sides of the building? What types of spaces would you like to see around the site, whether it's rec fields, picnic areas, activity areas, let us know those, those thoughts of what you have. And then on this slide, you'll see some photos from uh, speaking about some of these discussion points, the sunken entrance from the parking lot, the hidden play, playground, and also a view, a view of the rear of, of, Ed, of Ed Davis. What are some other areas around the site that we should know more, more about? And with that, I'll pass over to Zach. Yeah, thanks, Mary. And uh, so I really like what Mary was saying there with that, uh, looking at these assets and really, uh, really putting them up on, you know, showcasing them. And you could see uh, in that picture of the park that it's, I mean, it's a nice park, but it's very hidden right now. The entire site, as you can see from that front entry, is very hidden. Uh, so what can we do to really make this thing shine, really make this thing sparkle? Uh, and that kind of takes us into the actual floor plan of the building. So it was built in the 70s. Uh, and that floor plan was set up just, you know, typical of the 70s, very effective, very efficiently. So you have the multi-purpose room, the gymnasium, and it's all connected with that corridor. Um, but it, that was really designed to serve its current use uh, or, or its use back in the 70s. So what can we do to these spaces to make, the, uh, make that layout really work for the people of the community? Uh, and I think, you know, to get the best sort of pulse on that, let's uh, turn it over to Robert to get a better idea of what, how people are using this space. Okay, good evening. Uh, first, we'll start with the gym. Gym is basically used for basketball, and there's other activities that, that may be done in there, such as tennis um, and other, other uses for that. Uh, as you walk down the corridor hallway, you'll stop next to the classroom. The classroom is used for uh, mentoring at times, and, and if there are smaller meetings that, that is occurring or, or other events uh, within the community. Uh, if you continue down, you see the lobby and then the game room area. That's really where the uh, children go and play games, uh, depending on if they're here before or after practice. Um, sometimes their siblings, you know, may be in there if they're uh, in an event or activity. Um, and then we move to the multi-purpose room, which, which is just that. There's many activities that go on uh, in the multi-purpose room uh, from our aerobics to dance class. Uh, there's uh, repasses that are done, there's parties. Um, so that is the, uh, what the multi-purpose room is for, uh, as well as other activities if we need to on a, on a larger scale. So the building is, is pretty functional. Uh, there are some areas that definitely need some areas of improvement but uh, that's how the building is currently laid out. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, and we can also see a few images of this, these spaces just for those of you who haven't been in the space lately. Um, but you can see all these spaces. And uh, yeah, thanks, Robert, for giving us a little rundown of what goes on in there. Uh, as you can see, the spaces are <laughs> kind of dated. Um, and I mean, we spoke with some people in the community, and they said they remember having you know, birthday parties there. Uh, 
we'll say 20 years ago. I think I see you here in this call. Um, but yeah, just, you know, it's been the same since, you know, 1970. What can we do to bring this up to par? I mean, uh, you know, going back to what Rob was saying, we, we need to bring this up, you know, ADA, accessibility, all those things. But, you know, that's the bare minimum. What can we do? What sort of feedback can we get from you all to uh, really make this thing sparkle, really make it shine for the community? Uh, and in speaking with people in, you know, people who work there, the staff, Robert, a uh, few people at the city, uh, we got a little bit of feedback and uh, we can kind of see some of this feedback here. Um, oh, sorry, some... one sec. I'm getting uh, a lot of chat and I'm loving it. <laughs> okay, good. All right, here you go. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, so some of the feedback we've gotten from people on site. Uh, so just more spectator seating in the gym. I know there's a lot of events that go on in there. Uh, with little seating, uh, esports, uh, some sort of public computer stations. Actually, I saw that in the chat sort of roll by already. Uh, good to know we're all sort of on the same page so far. Uh, yeah, so views, access, programming, more classrooms. Uh, what else can we do with this space? And uh, if you've been to this community center in the past, we'll say week or so, uh, we put a board out there and uh, we've actually gotten a lot of feedback, a lot live. And this was filled up within the first 48 hours of putting it out there. So thank you to those of you who have you know, been to the site and given us your feedback. Uh, but we could start to see a lot of things around in here, like a clothing pantry, a uh, food pantry, looking at a, you know, pool, track. Um, okay, more social gatherings, some good stuff. Yeah, a lot of good ideas. And I think back to what we're talking about with our process for this actual project, uh, we need this input from you all. Um, so I think this would be a good time to kind of turn it over and we wanna hear from you all. I know that you've all been commenting in the chats, uh, if you'd like to say something, go ahead and raise your hand and we can uh, call on you to get a little bit more feedback. Uh, while we're talking about this, while we're commenting, uh, let's go ahead and have some discussion to talk more about these spaces that you want to see. Uh, so I see something on there. Okay, eSports room. I know that was something that uh, we had heard on site. Would that be just a game room, something with computers? I think this is a good time to actually hear from you all. Um, so yeah, I want to open up the floor to the community for this community Zach, center. we have uh, Kenneth Smith who has his hand raised. Um, I will uh, unmute him or he may be able to unmute himself. Okay, hello everyone. Hi. So I am a staff member actually at Air Davis, grew up in Air Davis and now my children are there. So um, I have quite a bit of uh, feedback for the center. I don't know if you guys are able to go back, but looking at the structure and looking at the opportunities that present itself, if you look at the whole landscape of what we have there at Ed Davis, there's a lot of opportunity um, for expansion, for growth and to add different things. Because if we go back to the pictures, you're looking at the um, classrooms right now. So I'm going to speak from an educator perspective as, yes, that, that's perfect right here. Okay. So, so if you look at this, if you look at this layout, so you have the classrooms right here, and it's really one. One is more of a, um, the second one that's closest to the gymnasium is more of a, a storage space. Ooh. It's not a classroom. My so, apologies, hold on. <laughs> Go ahead. So as we're in that space currently, like Thursday, we have a program with Kent State University. We're doing virtually with them, and we have um, 11 girls in there. You're not able to hear um, what is taking place if there's activity going on in the gymnasium. So um, little things like that. If you look at the corridor and the lobby going through there, you have pipes there. Um, in the summertime, you have air conditioning on in the pipe sweat. Um, that whole walking area that's there becomes really wet. You're not able to um, move through there because of the traffic. So I mean, I think if we're, if we're being realistic about what's happening, if we've neglected this place for 40 years, and haven't done general maintenance. Um, like we literally just got Wi-Fi at the community center. Uh, not even, it hasn't even been six months yet. So if we're looking at opportunities, I think one, we're gonna have to address the conditions that have been neglected for 40 years, but then look to realistically think about 21st century um, and where we're going. So re realistically, where what are we trying to do for um, esports that one of those classrooms should be an esports room that has everything mm -hmm. that all the technologies that could encompass an esports room. That gymnasium, looking at where we are right now, could be broken up into two, possibly three classrooms. And now, realistically, you can have classroom space because beyond those gymnasium doors, 
And even out here to the bottom of this, this diagram, you have more land, more opportunity, and you can make a realistic community center that the community is able to be invited in. You're mm -hmm. talking about back here. Yes, I'm, yeah. Yeah, behind so there's you. like so much area for expansion. So the community has. Yeah, all this area. Ram that Ed Davis houses is full and it's to capacity, but it's limited because there isn't any space in the um, in the facility. So if dance is going on in the multi-purpose room and tutoring is going on in the classrooms and one athletic activity is going on in the gymnasium, then that's it. There is nothing else that can be taking place because you have that very, very small lobby. So, so the reality is um, we're lacking space in the, in the, from a physical standpoint of the foundation that we have right now, but then we have the opportunity to expand. So I think realistically from being neglected for 40 years, like literally I grew, I'm 38. I grew up in Ed Davis. I went away to college. I came back and everything is exactly the same. So the reality is if the community needs to be served, we can neglect the pool because the pool is across the street. We need a facility that can realistically house multiple programs, but the programs that have been very successful and shown how successful they are can continue to grow and thrive and realistically serve the community that is actually trying to come and be a part of the programs. That was wonderful feedback. I greatly appreciate your, uh, what you've provided us today. And you're absolutely right, you know, and the goal is to take advantage of the good things with this facility. And we understand that it was built in the mid seventies and, but it's got good bones and there, we could take advantage of some of these spaces and just take them to another level. And it's just all about figuring out what the community wants to do and how best can we accommodate in this building. And we're not gonna say that expansion beyond this footprint isn't possible, but we've really got to take a hard look at it and, and make sure we take everybody's ideas and consider them. It looks like we have another raised hand. Yeah. I, we have Natasha. Hi, um, how, how's everyone? Doing well. Very good, thank you. That's good, okay. I am a, I grew up in Ed Davis actually. Um, Kenny is my cousin. So literally our entire family has been raised at Ed Davis. Um, and I was gonna touch on, I wouldn't have said it as eloquently as uh, Kenny, but uh, the space um, as a child, Ed Davis was huge, huge as a child. And then as I became an adult, I realized how limited the space was. Mm -hmm. And also when events are happening, um, Ed Davis does a wonderful job of trying to um, suit the community that it serves um, with the space that it has. Um, but when we're all up there and everything's going on, uh, like Kenny said, if you're tutoring in one section, have a game going on in one section, I have nowhere to park a lot of the times. Also have nowhere for to sit. Um, and then everything is meshed together. Like you can hear everything and everybody. Um, if I'm a kid being tutored in a classroom on the side, but there's a game on and in the hallways right there, I'm unable to concentrate. Um, also, um, a community center is only a strong community. So with that being said, um, what does this community need? Um, we need jobs. We need uh, employment opportunities. We need um, mentoring programs. Do because if we have a community center um, that's in the community, but um, only opted to play basketball there maybe twice a week, because um, we have some beautiful, beautiful community centers in Akron that the community can't access. And I'm not saying this about Ed Davis. I'm just saying this in a general sense. Um, so we need to be realistic about this. Uh, that's really all I have. Oh, well, appreciate that, Natasha. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, you see, I'm frantically writing these down as you guys are mentioning them. And, and again, we great uh, that wonderful mentioning the job training and mentoring programs that 
I, as you guys probably saw in the survey, that was one of the questions, you know, what, what do you guys want to see at programming wise? And, and actually, I think a lot of responses went to job training and mentoring programs. And so Julia, Julia, Natasha uh, hit on something here that um, I also saw in the chat box. Um, uh, there was a comment about community stressors, and I'm not sure if those stressors are some of the things you just hit on, or are there other community stressors? I'd like someone to maybe elaborate on that, if, if someone would mind to talk about what those are and how Ed Davis could uh, play a part in, in relieving those. I mean, look at who Ed Davis serves. Um, Ed Davis is in a um, community. Um, you gotta see who's running these households in this community. Mm -hmm. What's the median income in, this, in these communities? I mean, what, we, we gotta look at things like that. Um, what is the current climate in these communities? What are directly affecting these households in which our community center is centered in? i.e. violence. I think that with, with our young people is one of the huge problems right now, huge problems right now in our community. And I work in juvenile justice. And so I know firsthand. And we need, we, we absolutely need things for our young people, particularly our young men. Yeah, in sort of response to, this is a little bit of a Kenneth, but also all right guys you're all about to get an amber alert <laughs> oh boy so you might hear buzzing we apologize so right, I, I think in response to that uh I, I think kenneth had a lot of great things to say i mean in talking about the physical structure that's been neglected for so long uh i'm i'm personally i'm very thankful that the city is taking this opportunity to you know let's start with Ed Davis, like we need to start here. Um, I love that there's that acknowledgement. Um, so that makes me feel good. Um, just, you know, as, as a citizen of Akron, um, that makes me feel good. But now it's to the point where we need to do this the right way. Uh, there's no more neglect, like let's do this the right way now. Um, and, and I'm glad that you pointed that out because like if you're walking down the hallway and it starts to get slippery, how do we start to fix these things? And just from a facility standpoint, over to what Natasha was saying, it's too loud, there's too much going on. There are a lot of hard surfaces, that hard floor, hard ceilings, hard walls, just sound bounces. And I think that kind of steps into that neglect where it's this, uh, we can put better things in there because we know that we're gonna take care of it. And, and moving on to that, uh, what do we do with the actual community? Quoting Natasha again, it takes a, like you can have a community center, but it takes that strong community. Uh, so I'm glad that we're getting, you know, a lot of voices out here and we're starting to, you know, at least have some sort of movement because, I mean, we can create a better community center, uh, but it's, I think it's going to be everyone's responsibility, um, you know, even the city's responsibility to make sure that this stays a strong community. Um, so I, I think it'd be very good to, you know, let's get these classrooms in here. Let's make better use of that uh, multi-purpose room so that we can have multiple multiple groups sort of in their meeting, like what would happen if we had voting in there? Uh, classroom, you know, what if we had a classroom big enough to, you know. Um, exactly. so we have, we have Cheryl, Cheryl's had her hand, oh, good. hand raised. Yeah, let's bounce on to Cheryl, sorry about that. Hello, um, I'm Cheryl Vincent and I'm actually, um, I'm a parent of a few students that go to um, Ed Davis to play basketball and other uh, volunteering for the community center. And um, I've, my children have been going there for a few years now. And I'm also a, a cheerleading commissioner. So I'm able to, you know, uh, identify other issues such as like the electrical outlets and everything, trying to plug up just to get some type of uh, equipment plugged up. Certain outlets don't work within the facility. You know, it's a lot of um, uh, equipment issues like, like Coach uh, Jojo talked about. But also um, he asked about the stressors in the community. I did make that comment about the stressors. You know, being a community center, we have to address everything that's affecting the community. It's not just for the children that come to play basketball or somebody just come to do aerobics, but it's also uh, addressing the issues that are lacking in the community, such as someone has said, you know, clothing and 
food uh, accessibility and um, also the education for the rooms to be expanded so that there's uh, a lot more room for the, the children and the parents or whoever needs assistance to be able to come and be able to get that taken care of. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the lighting in the parking lot, you know, going to pick my kids up at a, a hour and the lights aren't working, you know, that can be very dangerous being a wooded area. Um, it could be very dangerous at nighttime, not being able to see uh, clearly, but um, yeah, the, the stressors in the community, it's a lot like mental health. I mean, if they had uh, programs to address mental health, like case management type services to be able to direct families to um, like resources, housing, whether it's housing, uh, food, clothing, anything like that to be able to address the family issues in the community because the community is deprived. That, that again was a wonderful. It, no, thank let you. me touch on, I'm sorry, uh, I know we got more people who raised their hands, but let's touch on direction to resources. That has been one of the items that we've had lots of discussion on uh, so far today. Like how can we get the community the information that they need and, and at different in different ways? Uh, do we need to uh, somehow, you know, interact with the local libraries and have them post information about what's going on at your community centers? Uh, we were talking about adding signage to the buildings, like a, a electronic signage that shows the schedule, and then that schedule is linked to the community center's website. We, we've definitely talked about those things, and, and I think any direction is a good way to start. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, do I you have Go ahead. I'm sorry, I had made a comment on, I had completed the survey and uh, when it were asked if, you know, what type of partnership should be created. Um, and I had stated that, you know, other types of, like the young lady said, there are other community centers in, in the community that is not linked to Ed Davis, but I feel like if there was uh, a partnership with other uh, businesses in the community where they are able to uh, benefit from the funding that they receive and it not just be a, a single funding to this building, but also be able to pull from other funding sources also, such as like uh, like the YMCA or the University of Akron or uh, the United Way or something like that, because they do address certain issues and those resources will be able to be uh, bridged, that will bridge the gap for Ed Davis to be able to get some things taken care of inside of their building so that they would, so we would have access to those resources also. All right, thank you, Cheryl. You wanna, Michelle, do you wanna uh, go to the next person raising their hand? I think Dan Jones, and then we have a Terry Moore. Yeah, uh, Dan, you can unmute. And then if somebody can give me um, Terry's phone number, then I can unmute him when it's uh, the next turn. Okay, hi, I'm Dan Jones. Happy to be here. Happy to hear that all this is in the works for Ed Davis. I've been a long time, uh, you know, member in the community. Uh, for years, I've run the Say Yes to Tennis, Say No to Drugs program. We did a tournament for many, many years, and we honored Ed Davis uh, during those tournaments. In fact, he presented the awards to the winners. So, and then way back when, I used to uh, help Miss Gardner run her daycare out of Ed Davis. So, I'm very familiar with the facility, and I'm presently uh, using the facility to teach uh, indoor tennis. What I'd like to see is a kind of a two twofold approach. One, I'm a huge believer in mentoring, and I, I'm connected with a couple uh, large companies that are mentoring youth, uh, teaching them different skills. I know I'm working with a guy in Cleveland who owns 20 pizza shops, and he actually trains kids uh, in, the, in the business, teaches them how to actually work for him. And he's taking them from the ninth grade all the way through high school, paying them $5,000 a year just for being in this program and they get $20,000 when they complete it. If they complete the program, the only, the only uh, caveat is they have to agree to save $5,000 of the $20,000 that they earn in order for him to uh, 
to go ahead with his promise. But I, I think we should do a lot of that in this particular area. Uh, I'm, I own a marketing company. Uh, I have some really innovative techniques for marketing. I would love to take a group of maybe 10 to 12 youngsters on a regular basis and teach them marketing that they're not going to learn in college. Uh, the stuff I do is uh, very, very, uh, like I say, it's very, very innovative. Uh, it's all based on uh, promises that if I don't deliver, you don't pay. So it's very performance-based marketing. I love to be able to teach young people how to do that because then they never have to work for anybody ever. But the other end of this is I've, I've longed to have a summer day camp tennis program at the uh, tennis courts right down the hill from Ed Davis. The reason I, I haven't done it in the past is because parents can't drop their kids off for an hour or two in the summer. They can't run back and forth and pick them up. They need to be in a day camp. So kids need to be able to, to come to tennis for like maybe four hours and maybe one of those hours it would be a meal or a, a, a discussion on maybe a business or drug prevention or gang prevention or just something of that nature. But that would require, you know, transportation because, uh, you know, a lot of the kids, I mean, I mean, particularly for rain outs, we'd have to find somewhere to go indoor. I can pull all that together. For example, you know, and if it rained, I could take them to an indoor club in the area, but we would need buses for that. But this would be a very bona fide program. It would probably garner uh, recognition throughout the state because I have so many connections. But I never, again, I've never been able to do it because in the summer you're competing with all the other day camps and parents are able, you know, parents can drop those kids off for four to six hours. And it makes it much easier. Whereas with our tennis program, we were always one hour and, and it kind of precluded that because of uh, parents just couldn't get, couldn't get their kids picked up. So again, um, I'm suggesting all these things, but I'm also saying that I, I would actually do this. I'm a, I'm a doer. I'm not a talker. I've been around talkers all my life, but uh, I would love to see something like this happen at Ed Davis. And uh, again, I applaud everybody for being here tonight, and I appreciate you even looking at this. Thanks. I'm going to unmute uh, Terry Moore. He's been waiting. Hey, uh, before Terry, before you speak, um, as you reply, um, you know, collectively, I'm curious to know how Krauss may come into play at all in any of you know, your assessment of the community in general and, and what facilities you know, Ed Davis might have with other um, institutions in the neighborhood. So uh, I can't remember who mentioned something earlier about connecting with other um, places and um, other funding agencies. So if someone could opine on that, that would be interesting too, thank you. Hello, it's uh, Terry Moore. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, great. All right, um, I've been um, involved with Ed Davis Community Center for about well, 35 years. Uh, my kids grew up in the program. Uh, they're grown now. Uh, now my grandson, I have three grandsons, but my 10-year-old grandson um, is uh, attending there, you know, um, as much as we can. You know, I know that the uh, our current situation has prevented you know, a lot of entry into the building, but a few ideas that I have, I don't want to take all the time, but I have a few things that I think are of importance. Uh, I think we need to develop programs to um, develop the kids' critical thinking. And when I say critical thinking, um, thinking, you know, without your, without your phone. So if you ask a kid something, most times they grab their phone and they Google it or they YouTube it. Uh, but I would like for kids to be able to think without the aid of a phone. For instance, um, if you're out of state and you lose your phone, how do you get back home? You know, um, growing up, my father always told me, make sure you have a map and don't lose your map. So I think we need to have programs that we can teach kids how to read a basic road map. You know, that way, if you lose your phone, you can go to Walmart and buy a map and, and you know, and, and get home. Um, the other thing, I think we need to um, have a basic class on finances. You know, explain to kids what a FICO score is, you know, explain to them what TransUnion, you know, and all the other uh, agencies are, because that's going to affect them. And not only does it affect you with, with your purchasing power, 
you know, it affects your employment. You know, you apply for a job, you know, they, you know, they kind of look at that credit score and possibly, and it, you know, it can affect you. So we need to develop that. Um, we need to teach kids how to read uh, the auto manual. You know, if you get a Haynes manual or a children's manual, you have to work on your car, you know, um, you know, you, you need to be able to read and comprehend that. And so I think in today's society, reading and comprehension, we, we've lost that because everything is, 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 is through the phone. You know, we're not reading anything and have to comprehend and, and then perform the action. And so that's kind of what the, what the, the auto manuals, you know, teach is reading and comprehension. You read it, you, you know, you find what your problem is and then you go, you know, uh, troubleshoot and try to, cor- try to find, you know, what your problem is. That's one thing. The other two things I like to have us realize is that we're more than just a athletic center. You know, basketball is just what the kids do, you know, but it's not who they are. You know, uh, there's one in, there's one in 10,000 that's going to, you know, uh, play basketball or professional sport where you're going to earn your living. So we need to actually start planting a seed of what the Occupational Outlook Handbook is, the OOH Handbook. That's a, that's a, a tool that kind of gives the kid a career, tells them what the forecast for the, for the next 10 years is and what qualifications, that, you know, they, they need to have. The other thing is the Cooter Occupational Interest Survey. You know, we need to start planting that seed. So we need to, we need to get a kid to tool, toolkit and the, the uh, people of the community need to put the tools in there so as they navigate through life, they have some tools that they can draw on that's going to help them in their adult life. I'm, I'm a firm believer that kids kind of, you know, young kids turn into young adults and they don't have any tools because we as a community didn't do enough, a good enough job of putting tools in that toolkit for them. So I'd like to have, um, you know, some programs where we can actually talk to the kids and listen to the kids. Uh, when I was coaching, you know, I had a, um, the first five minutes was called open floor and open floor was any kid that had anything they want to say. They can talk about it. And so as adults, I think, and coaches, sometimes we do too much talking. I think we need to do more listening. So we need to have a dedicated area in Ed Davis that can be considered the open floor area. So if you're in that area, you know, an adult would see, hey, there's a kid over there. Maybe he has something he wants to talk about and give them the space to talk. To talk. We listen because how can we help them if we're not listening to what, what they have on their minds? So I think that's very important. So like I said, I just don't want to take all the time, but those are just some of the few ideas that I have, and I'd be more than interested to volunteer my time, you know, as I have over the last 30 years, you know, to, uh, to do my part to try to, um, you know, keep these kids going in the right direction. Thank you. I love that open floor area idea. That's, that's wonderful. You see, that, uh, you see that at schools where they have, like, buddy benches. You know, uh, where, you know, if you're alone and you need somebody to talk to or you're having an issue, they would go to the buddy bench and some either another kid or an adult would go and join that child and talk through whatever issues they have. So I think that's a wonderful um, idea as well. And I think you hit on a lot of good things about youth programs. Okay. Uh, do we have anybody else who has a raised hand? Looks like uh, Dan and Natasha have their hands raised. Oh, really? My and you can up. unraise your hand once you're done. You can unraise it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else that wanted to speak on this open <laughs> forum? One more thing. I just want to say one last thing, like listening to everyone, like I know every person that spoke. And so I I just want to come back to this reality, right? Like looking at the structure of the building, like everything that we offer is available on a very limited basis. But the reality is like, we're not able to access or have all of these programs that the community actually needs because of the limits like it's just the the reality is there's a lot of opportunity we talked about that word opportunity there's so much opportunity here with the space and the building the reality is what we have to figure out how can we make these opportunities come to life because it doesn't matter if there's opportunities to have 10 programs when ed davis isn't large enough to accommodate 10 programs so i just wanted to go back to that because the reality is if we're going to have the things that the community need 
it has to be a space large enough for those programs to be able to be realistically implemented and thrive. That's a fair, fair point. And I want to say this. I said it earlier. Um, Ed Davis has done a marvelous job serving, serving its community with its limited resources over the years. Um, I, I can't say enough about how much Ed Davis does with what little they have. Um, also, um, seeing buildings being put up around our city. Um, Makes, makes our city very beautiful. We're being more pro progressive, everything. But I question this. Um, once these buildings actually start getting put up, who's on these sites? Are, are people in the community part of these paychecks that are being distributed? I think it's a greater respect from the community um, when they have direct hands on. That's just my opinion. And it's also a resource and helpful to the community and can be a, a, a sense of pride and economics. I totally agree um, with that uh, statement about, um, you know, the, the, the buildings being built up around. Um, Ed Davis has been uh, working with children for years and not just regular children, children that become very successful. And a lot of that is stemmed from Ed Davis. So, you know, I just think that we should recognize the importance of the foundation that Ed Davis is creating in, in these kids that's coming from out of there and that's becoming adults in the community. Um, but I, I just really think that we need to, like Kenny said, expand it so that we can uh, provide all these services in the community because what's the point of it being considered a community center if it's not addressing the community issues so it needs to be a it needs to address the community issues and the only way we're going to be able to do that is to be able to expand it and put more in so that everyone is comfortable working around each other and um uh yeah like everything everything that he said and every everything everybody else said about the structural part of Ed Davis definitely needs to be addressed. This is Rob. I'm hearing uh, sort of a common theme, I think, uh, uh, amongst uh, uh, a lot of the comments. Uh, in, in it's not so much about I need a basketball court and it needs to be uh, X dimension by Y dimension. It's really, and those are the easy spaces because you can find those in the catalog. Um, for sport and for some other things, but it's really those spaces that need to be equipped, whether through technology or through uh, acoustic separation, uh, uh, by making them inviting where, where, where many things can be facilitated over time because it's uh, you're not gonna have one room that is going to be solely dedicated for any one activity. And so these rooms need to be dynamic uh, and, and capable of evolving, uh, especially the, the rooms that are, are, are more classrooms in, in, in sort of the description, uh, so that uh, there's going to be ebbs and flows in terms of who volunteers and who in the programs that are needed and the need of the community. And so uh, much like the, if you read the old floor plan, it said things like uh, daycare center and, and, and those, those functions have evolved and yet the, the building is still active. And so uh, we need to really take heart to that programmatic standpoint from the standpoint of how you equip the building to make it workable and, and not lock it in that you can only use this room for this purpose. And so there's a lot of multi-use that we're hearing here. And that's good it's because that's the trick here is to, to make it available for many things. Thank you. All right, we have uh, five minutes and uh, left in today's program and wanted to see if anybody else wanted to uh, speak up and share more thoughts. You can see we are filling up this uh, document here with terrific thoughts and, and I couldn't be more pleased at this point. Uh, does any, oh, we got Margo Somerville, go ahead. Thank you so much. I just wanted to share 
Uh, for those who might not know, my name is Margo Somerville. I am president of Akron City Council and Ward 3 Council person uh, in which Ed Davis resides in my district. So we are extremely excited about the investment that is long overdue that is coming uh, to Ed Davis Community Center. So just wanna thank all of our partners for helping us make this process uh, uh, possible. And also wanna do a special shout out to uh, Mr. Doddell as well. And just to let the community know, wanna thank you for taking out the time and sharing uh, your comments in terms of what you want your community center to look like, because that's what it is. It is your community center. Mm -hmm. And so we wanna do this uh, in conjunction with you. And so just wanna let you know that you have commitment from me, the council person, council president and Akron City Council to make sure that funds are available to make whatever the vision that this community wants uh, in terms of what they want the new Ed Davis Center to look like. So I just wanna thank all of those who have participated in the call tonight. Thank you very much, Margo. Yeah, and I think uh, just one last thing for me, sorry. Uh, I wanna make sure that everybody is, is thinking about, uh, I don't remember who mentioned it, but it, it seems like everyone I've spoken with who grew up in Ed Davis, like has these great memories, uh, has come from this uh, stronger, I guess, more prepared. Uh, and that's what we're gonna provide for this, you know, this next generation, but also, you know, adults as well. Um, but it's it's good to hear all those people who have these just good stories from it. I think it's impressive to see what the community has been given and what the community has done with that. Uh, so what can we, what else can we give to, you know, set the future people who use this? How can we set these people up for more success? Uh, so I love all of these programmatic ideas, all of these uh, partnerships and things we're coming up with. Uh, but I think currently something we can ask from you is to fill out that survey. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, go ahead, send an email to Robert. Uh, go ahead, give Robert a call. Um, let us know what we can put into this building to make sure that it is fully serving the community how the community deserves to be served. Uh, because currently it's, I mean, I saw one of the comments was that this community center isn't up to par with some of the other ones. And um, how, do we, how do we fix that? This is the time to make sure that we fix that. It's just, it, it's inappropriate to provide so little when uh, we deserve so much as a community. So I'm excited okay. to hear all this feedback. I think this has been oh, great. Um, really good stuff, especially all these ideas. I think this is also an opportunity for Robert to look at all these people who are volunteering. Uh, I'm assuming you guys are gonna be held accountable for volunteering all these, <laughs> all these programs. Uh, where I think these partnerships are going to be great. Um, so yeah, this is this is really exciting. Zach, that was very well said. Thank you so much. Uh, so you see on the screen right now, you know, we've got the flyers that are available at the community centers. We have the survey that's going to run live through mid March. Please encourage your friends, family to fill out that survey. The more we hear, the better results we're going to have. And also, like Zach said, you reach out to Robert Dowdle. Uh, you can also reach out to the Akron Rec Desk as well. Uh, and I want to be very clear, this is not going to be the last time the community is going to hear from this group of people. Um, we want to make sure that the lines of communication remain open and that when, we, when this project starts getting into, you know, walls and spaces and outdoor design, uh, we're going to meet with you again and make sure that we're on track with uh, what we're hearing. And uh, so please keep your ears, eyes open, stay tuned. There's lots more to come. And, you know, it's 6.59 and I don't want to take up any more of everybody's evening. And we've got so much wonderful feedback today. Uh, so in closing, thank you so much. And yes, the presentation, as Michelle's putting in the chat right now, is being recorded and will be provided on the RecDesk website. Again, thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, you as well. Thanks again.